Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between stochasticity, uh, variation, path dependency, and validation. So stochasticity means that you cannot compare one set of results from the real world and one set of model results because your model is going to be a stochastic model, right? Uh, and so because it's not deterministic, comparing just one set is, is the wrong way to go about it. In fact, if you go back to the behavior search example, uh, you know, what we did was we actually ran the model several, several times, took the means and, and compared the results and saw how close the mean squared where it was over time, right? So, um, you know, in identifying that appropriate comparison measure, how to compare your multiple random results with one um, real world data set can be difficult at time. Um, and, you know, common measures could include any of the error measures I discussed in the previous lecture, correlation, mean squared error, root mean squared error, L1, L2, all these different things, and more. And it really depends upon what the standards are in your field and what the data that you're looking at is. Sometimes one thing that's useful to do is to think about the, the difference between when your model says something is variant and when your model says something is invariant. In other words, it's always going to happen, right? Um, so you could examine model outcomes that occur all the time versus model outcomes that only occur some of the time. And the reason why that might be useful is because it might tell you when your model is telling you um, something that it really thinks is going to happen and when it's not sure or when there might be path dependency, which we'll talk about in a second, right? So for example, it could be the diffusion is always going to exceed uh, the peak before time t, right? That it will reach its peak at time t. Uh, but 50% of the time, it's going to peak before time t minus n or something like that, right? This, can, this way of breaking things up into variance and invariant results can help you understand what aspects of the model are stochastic or what, what, stochastic, what aspects of the stochasticity are affecting your model results, right? Um, and this variant versus invariant analysis can also help you to understand path dependency. Uh, so path dependency is when events that occur early in the model run greatly affect the outcome in some way where they have a dramatic effect on the results of, of the model, right? And they can, they can um, mean that things like, for instance, um, you know, maybe a certain influential adopts, a certain fraction of influentials adopt your product early on, that could have a great effect on when the peak adoption rate is, right? So, um, and if a model exhibits a large number of variant outcomes, that could often be a clue that you're, um, in, that you're heading down a, a course of path dependency of some sort. On the other hand, it could also just be that you have stochasticity in the model and there's just a variance around those, right? So trying to look at the relationship between the, the amount of variation and whether it's a path dependency issue or a stochastic issue can be difficult to do at times with something you can think about. So, when uh, a lot of these ideas on path dependency and stochasticity come out of a paper uh, that I was part of uh, back in 2005, where we were looking at land development from agent-based modeling, right? And so here we're, uh, this is actually a, a, a graphic from that paper, right? And in this case, we could look at a single realization of the model outcome. So this is white here indicates the particular parcel of land is developed, black indicates it isn't, right? And this is a single realization of the model, but you can also look at the frequency, right, with which each model area was developed. And then we also classified into variant and invariant regions. So what we did was we said, you know, if in less than 10% of our runs, that area was never developed, we'll call it invariant. Or if greater than 90% of runs, it was always developed, we'll call it variant, right? Uh, invariant. And so then you get these dark black spots, which are the invariant, and the white spots, which are the invariant regions, and these gray spots are the variant regions, the area where the model's uh, predicting there could be areas of difference, right? And then this is comparing to a reference map as well, right? So using this, you might be able to, you know, look at the results a little bit and determine, you know, what can, do, is there possible for there to be easy effects on, right? Variant regions mean that maybe small incentives one way or other could affect the results. And so thinking through these different aspects of how to do validation and what validation is going to help you obtain can help you also understand how you can influence your model. So validation has a number of different aspects that are useful, right? Uh, valid models help us understand the world around us. They help us understand when we can influence 
uh, future possibilities, right? So in that land development case, right, if we notice an area is highly variant, but it's also ecologically sens sensitive, maybe we can provide incentives to keep people from moving into that, that area, right? Um, and, that, and we know that it's going to happen, whereas maybe another area shows it's always going to be developed, even though it's ecologically sensitive. And so maybe that's an area we should not concentrate our policies on, but instead focus on trying to preserve another part of the, of the environment, right? Again, much like verification and validation is not a dichotomy, but a continuum, right? So a model is not valid or invalid, right? It's more or less valid depending upon how well it's been validated. Um, and in the end, whether or not a model is valid can become a deeply philosophical issue, right? What's interesting is that I'm, you know, a lot of times the first thing you do once you validate a model is you break the validation because you want to try something that you haven't ever seen in the real world, right? Um, but the important thing to remember is the model is valid if the model meets validity standards set up by the expected audience, right? So to the extent to which the model is used in a valid way depends upon what your audience thinks is worthy of the model being considered valid, right? Uh, and that's, that's troublesome at times, right? Because different audiences are different, but it's really in the end, the only way you can really judge uh, the success of your model validation efforts.